everyone to the hello world guys this is another episode of the 3d opengl renderer series and in this video we are going to continue by uh, well first of all we are going to create a method for separating our shaders from our main code so you can see currently we have got a shader class but currently the code we use is basically this vertex shader code and this fragment shader code we have got those defined as strings now as you want to write more complicated shaders to take into account lighting and uh, a bunch of other stuff this won't really work because uh, these shaders are like very basic so uh, like they can fit in here but for more complex shaders we like them to be in their own separate files so in order to do that what we can do is I'm going to go under solution explorer and uh, these are filters these are not actual folders but instead just filters I'm going to right click on this and add a new uh, filter yeah like that and you can just call this one shader files so uh, yeah we are going to basically store them in here now visual studio might have some extensions for uh, handling glsl files by default it does not provide like syntax highlighting so yeah that is uh, not that awesome i guess but uh, we are going to kind of just use it without that it's not really that i mean if you want you can do that uh, but uh, for now what we are going to do is we are going to create a shader which we are going to uh, call uh, vertex.glsl to kind of signify that this is our vertex shader and uh, the extension for glsl file can be glsl uh, but and uh, we are just calling it vertex.glsl but like in more complicated programs when you have multiple shaders generally use use dot vert for vertex shader extensions and dot shader for uh, and dot frag for fragment shaders and uh, these are kind of the what you know uh, you kind of do for if you want to have multiple shaders but currently we only have a single vertex and fragment shader therefore we are going to uh, call them vertex.glsl and fragment.glsl so i'm going to add uh, two new items here and uh, add another one here as well which i'm going to call fragment fragment.glsl uh, like that so we are going to do that and uh, once we have done that what we can do is we can go ahead and for example let's just copy all of this and of course this is written as a string and we are going to go under vertex.glsl and paste that here but we are going to change it first of all let me just kind of remove all of the indentation and uh, then we can uh, just uh, remove the uh, unnecessary you know uh, quotes and stuff like that we have got because we don't really need them anymore so we are going to go here and uh, we can just use like uh, multiple selection to do that that's going to be the best way so we are going to yeah we are going to basically use like a multiple cursor to kind of just remove this and uh, then we can remove these easily as well so yeah that is we are basically going to write a vertex shader like uh, we would in you know like a normal program in a separate file and then we are going to read this file when we want to run our program so we are going to do that and uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, also kind of uh, separate this and to kind of make it look cleaner because now we have got in a separate file we can kind of focus on that as well so yeah we can just uh, go ahead and uh, do it like this so we have got that done and uh, we can just kind of put different kind of uh, you know basically space it a bit to yeah look like a normal program here so we have got our vertex shader here and uh, you can just go ahead and copy the fragment shader as well and do a similar thing with that so we are going to co uh, copy that and uh, maybe you can if you want to just copy it one line at a time so uh, hashtag version 330 core and that and uh, yeah we can do that and we can also say out vector for frag color and uh, we can copy and paste that and then we can also paste the uniform line because of course we want to take in the uniform color as well so this would basically allow us to have our shader files in a separate kind of uh, you know files and uh, if you want syntax highlighting support and uh, stuff like that for this you can kind of uh, download some extensions i guess by default visual studio does not provide support for glsl files so i'm going to like go ahead and uh, yeah that's basically all i'm going to do this is our fragment shader and that is our uh, vertex shader and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much all we need to do we have got our vertex shader and our fragment shader in a separate file so now we need to create a function here to read those files and uh, pass them on to our shader so in here what we are going to do is we are going to uh, go ahead and create a function for reading the file called read text file all this function is going to do is take in a for the argument is going to take in a single string which representing the file name and it's basically going to uh, you know kind of output the whole content of the file uh, as a string so like the whole file from start to end like as a single string and uh, that's uh, all pretty good i guess and what we can do now is we can go ahead and uh, 
uh, we can implement this function and we can implement it in a second let's first go ahead and uh, actually use it in the places we need to so let's go up here when we are doing our shader it requires us to pass it the code so we are going to read the text file and for the name we are just going to pass vertex.glsl so we're going to read it and just get its contact uh, contents and pass them directly and we are going to do simple uh, similarly with the fragment uh, the file that we have got and of course this needs to return a std string and not void because that string is going to basically be the whole content of the file and uh, yeah that's that's pretty awesome i guess and now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, uh, by the way we want to not use fragment shader code when we are reading the text file but instead use the file literal uh, fragment.glsl so string literal here yeah and now we can remove this uh, like code that we have got for fragment shader and vertex shader and we can just uh, have our ma main function not contain those two files so now we need to implement the read text file function so we have got our fragment and vertex shader and now we need to implement the function so in order to implement the read from file method what we are going to do is we are going to go up there and include fstream for file stream and fstream for string stream file stream should be pretty obvious and the reason for string stream we are going to find in a second so we are going to create an if stream for input file only and we are going to open it as file and we are going to pass a file name in the constructor if the file is not open which means we failed for some reason uh, you might want to log an error message here and also return uh, uh, the you know like return just an empty string if nothing was found but we are not going to actually do that because uh, uh, we are not i am not going to personally uh, output a error message because uh, uh, if we read an empty shader then opengl will automatically give an error to us so now what we can do is we can go down here and uh, uh, if the file is open then we can read the contents of the file in order to do that we will create a string stream which is basically a stream but of strings uh, like uh, not actual file or anything so we are going to call and we are going to what we are going to actually do is we are going to say ss and uh, take in file dot read buff we are going to just call it ss and the uh, read buff function will basically kind of read the whole file for us and now we can uh, into the stream and then we can return the streams content as a string by using the str string method and uh, that is pretty much all we need to do it's going to uh, cause our read text file function to work correctly and now we should be getting anything in, in that we have got in our vertex and fragment or glsl files and if i run this we should get the same thing that we were getting in the last video so you can see it compiles and we can kind of see that we have got uh, the similar cube and uh, it's transformed and we can move around and everything works which shows that our shaders were loaded correctly yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video and in this video we kind of learned how to separate our shaders from our main program which is a good practice and it can help us uh, uh, create more complex shaders without uh, too much difficulties so in the next video we are going to really get into the heart of this and start seeing exciting results when we go ahead and uh, implement some kind of way of reading the actual meshes from the file from a file instead of uh, loading them directly so that's some um, but uh, that's something that we are going to do in the next video so stay tuned for that and make sure to like and subscribe uh, so that you don't miss it and share this video with other people as well and bye